Hey, this is Digital by Computing. We have got ourselves a Synology NAS and we're gonna look at the steps on how to uh, sync, how to back up the data from that NAS over to the cloud. We're looking at AWS, which is Amazon's Web Services Cloud. All right, so we're gonna assume that you've already configured the storage device on the network, that it's available on the network, that it's got an IP address, it's available uh, via a host name. So we're gonna open up a web browser and connect into the backend storage device itself via the IP address. All right, so here we are on our NAS. So we have logged in to the Synology NAS and there are a couple of things that you need to do. Firstly, you need to uh, go to the package center. So this is just, I've got, just got an icon right here on my desktop package center. You can actually access this as well from the main menu and select package center. And this is really just an app store uh, where you can go in and download applications. Uh, now, so to be able to actually set up your Synology NAS to be able to sync with AWS, uh, you need to go and download an application called Cloud Sync. So if you go and search for Cloud Sync, uh, you'll see it right here. I've already gone and downloaded it. If you don't have it already, go in and select install. It will then go and download that Cloud Sync software and install it onto your Synology NAS. Now we're assuming that your Synology NAS itself has an internet connection. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to go and download this uh, there is a, an option to do a manual install by downloading it from a different location, uh, say on your computer, putting it onto a USB stick and then connecting it to your NAS and then getting it that way. But we're just downloading it straight off the internet and downloading Cloud Sync. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to have yourself an AWS account. All right, so you can go ahead and configure one of these uh, quite easily. Just go to the AWS website and you just register for a new account. If it's for personal use, uh, you, you can actually use it for free with limited functionality. Uh, if it's for business, of course, you're gonna add certain services in there, uh, which will eventually start to charge as data is going in and out and depending on what sort of tiers you're using, et cetera, et cetera. But what we want to do is we wanna create what's called an S3 bucket within AWS. Essentially, S3 is a form of storage that is offered by AWS. So I've logged into my AWS uh, and I'm gonna go up to the services area where I'm presented with a number of different options uh, within AWS. There's obviously a lot of stuff in here, but under the storage area, this is the sort of storage that AWS provides you with. Uh, we're gonna be selecting S3, okay? So go into storage and select S3. Within here, we need to create a bucket. Okay, you'll see that I already do have a bucket in here, but we're gonna create a brand new one. And that is essentially the destinations where all of our data from our NAS is gonna be copied to. So let's just go ahead and select create bucket. And it's now gonna ask me some information. What do we want to call the bucket? So let's just say we're gonna call it Emilio's bucket 2020. Okay, uh, this will have to be a unique name. Uh, it will tell you if it's not a unique name or if it has um, uns, you know, if you, certain characters that you can't use. Uh, but give that a, a name. Uh, essentially, that is the name of the folder or the destination folder or bucket uh, where the data will be going into. Uh, then you've got the region, which is really just the region uh, where you want that bucket to live. Um, mine is by default Sydney. Uh, and as you can tell from my dodgy accent, I'm from Australia, so I'm gonna leave that as my region as Sydney. But of course, you'll select the region that is relevant to you, but it'll default to the region that you have created your AWS account in anyway. Block all access uh, or public access is really just making sure that that bucket is not accessible um, insecurely uh, over the internet. Uh, so you can go and actually create a secure connection to that bucket which we are going to cover in a little while. If you're happy with all that, we'll leave advanced settings as is and we select create bucket. So Emilio's bucket 2020 has been created. I can go and open that bucket and it's currently empty. There's nothing in here, right? I can upload an object. I can do you know properties and permissions, things like that. I can create a folder. So let's just create a folder and call it test folder. And that's now a destination folder within my Emilio's bucket uh, 2020, okay? Now that is it, my bucket is now created, but now I want to be able to give permissions uh, to my NAS to be able to actually see this bucket across the internet. So if you navigate to the top right uh, under the, uh, the name of your AWS account, so mine is, for example, my company name, I go down to my security credentials. 
Under your security credentials, we want to select access keys. What we're going to create in here is essentially um, some security measures, uh, an access key and a, and a secret access key. You essentially input those IDs, those keys, into uh, your Synology NAS uh, in CloudSync to then be able to authenticate against your AWS. So you'll see here, root user access keys provides unrestricted access to your entire AWS account. All right. So there are alternate ways to give access to this uh, cloud sync on your NAS. So just be aware that by creating these keys, you're essentially giving full access to your entire AWS service to your Synology NAS, uh, which may be okay if all you're running is S3, uh, but just be aware of that before you continue. So we're going to create a new access key for this. Okay, and from within here, you'll see that it's already got your access key ID and a secret access key uh, generated. Okay, you can go and download that. I would recommend that you do download that, put that in a secure place, because if you lose that, uh, you need to go and generate a brand new uh, set of keys to then be able to re-input into your uh, cloud sync on your Synology NAS. But these are the two IDs, the two keys that you will require to be able to go and create that bucket. Okay, so go ahead and um, copy these and we'll check back. All right, so once we've opened up Cloud Sync, you'll see I've already got a connection here established called Amazon S3. We now want to click on the little plus button right here and you're provided with this Cloud Sync Cloud Providers uh, area. Uh, within here, you select the cloud provider that we're going to be using to sync your NAS over to your uh, AWS bucket that we just created. So from within here, you wanna scroll down to S3 storage, which is essentially the storage within AWS and select next. And in here, we leave the S3 server as is, all right, Amazon S3. And here we input the access and the, sec and the secret keys uh, right that we, that we generated earlier right into there. So let's just go ahead and paste these. And if everything has worked correctly, we now do the drop down under bucket and it should authenticate against it. And you'll see that right there, it's picked up Emilio's bucket 2020. We select that. Now, if your bucket does not appear, uh, it could be that there is some sort of network connection problem. It could be that your access key, your secret key are incorrect. Uh, so make sure that you have these in there correct. Uh, and if everything has worked and your NAS has internet access, you should be able to see your bucket name right from here, select it and now select next. Now in here, what do we wanna call it? So we're just gonna call it Emilio S3. All right, what's my local path? So this is essentially the folder on your NAS that you want to sync up to um, S3. So it's not necessarily the entire NAS, it's only the folders that you require to be synced up or to be copied and backed up up to. So I've got a folder there, forward slash 4S3, and then my remote path. So this is now going to establish a connection to my S3. And in here, you'll see that there is the folder that we created earlier called test folder. Select that. So the contents of 4S3 is going to be copied to the test folder within uh, my S3 bucket. And that whole connection is gonna be called Emilio S3. We want it to be bi-directional or download or upload only. So do we want it to be in sync up and down? So every time something is changed up you know, on S3 or down on the NAS, you can set it so that it downloads the changes if you change anything in the S3 side or upload only. So if you wanna do a sync and make sure that they're both the same, bi-directional, if you wanna have this just as a target destination for a backup, you can select upload. So we're gonna say upload only. So any changes that are detected on 4S3, it will upload those to the test folder. The storage class is where do you want this to be moved to? So S3 has multiple tiers of storage. Uh, we're not gonna cover these. There are different tiers of storage, different speeds, different prices. Uh, but we're gonna leave it as standard storage for now, and we're gonna leave the rest as is. And, so, and you can schedule this as well, which we'll cover in a little while. Select next. Just to confirm that's all okay, and we click on apply. Congratulations, you've successfully completed the setup. So you'll see that here it is. This is my uh, Emilio's Bucket 2020, it's the name of the bucket. It's uh, cloud type is Amazon S3, and it's all up to date because there's really no data, so it didn't take really any time to sync that up there. I can go into task list, you can see essentially what it's doing. I can create multiple new paths. So, so if there are new folders to new remote paths uh, in the S3 bucket, you can go and create those in there. You can also create a schedule. So at the moment, it's automatically gonna upload the data 
um, as it needs to throughout the day. As soon as it finds some new file, some new files within 4S3, it's just going to upload it. But if you're in a business and you're obviously considered with bandwidth and limiting, um, you, know, tra- you know, certain traffic during the day, you may want to schedule this with backups out of hours. So you could potentially just click on enable and make sure that it only runs after hours. Uh, you you want it to not run, uh, let's say between eight to between eight and six. Uh, don't run or between eight and seven don't run you can run after then so that it ensures that after hours it will run uh, you can do some further settings rolling period max upload downloads you can you can actually truncate the data um, at a bit of you know control there uh, you can change the storage class and the part size so it, essentially it's in chunks of different sizes you can customize all that and then a bit of history about what it's doing. So as it's uploading data, as it's downloading data, whatever the option that is that you've selected. So let's just go ahead and test this. So within my 4S3 bucket, I've just copied this uh, ADM file, 20 meg big, right? In here, it will now start to do a sync and it should now show up within my S3 bucket. So if I now go into my history, you'll see that there it is. So it's detected it. ADM and it's now doing the sync up. So back here on my AWS, I'm inside my Emilio's bucket 2020 test folder. And in there, there is the file that has now been uploaded from my NAS all the way up to my AWS. Nice and easy. They are the basic steps on how to, um, you know, set up a sync between your Synology NAS over to an AWS bucket. Um, you can do a download and upload. You can use it for backups. You can make sure that two folders on the cloud and on premise are in sync. Uh, Very, very easy, very, very cool. Either way, that is it. I would love it if you subscribe, uh, like my videos as well, and um, also click on that bell notification button if you found this helpful and you can see a whole bunch of more of my videos. But that's it for now. We'll see you next time.